the, the concern for the pilgrimage is a very important concern, uh, and I support what the uh, World Council of Churches is doing. But we also need to realize that uh, pilgrimage is not part of some of our cultures. I mean, I come from the Pacific, Pacifica, and pilgrimage is not part of, of our daily routine. Uh, when we talk about pilgrimage, I'm excited about it as an option, as an alternative to what I consider to be the missionary attitude or the missionary era. My observation about the uh, churches in my region is that we are stuck on the missionary era. And so the question is, do we need to move the church away from the missionary era, the missionary way of thinking, into a pilgrimage um, culture? And what is the cost for that moving? The church is stuck in the missionary uh, way of thinking, but interpretation of the Bible is also stuck in the missionary um, mentality. I'll use a, an example of being stuck in the missionary era. Uh, the, the way that people interpret the uh, Genesis chapter 13. This is the story about Abraham returning from Egypt. Chapter 12, Abraham arrived in uh, Canaan. There was a famine. He took his wife, Sarai went to Egypt, told the Egyptian king that this is my sister. So that's the story in Genesis 12, returns in Genesis 13. Uh, missionary kind of readings uh, would see this text, for example, as, uh, as an explanation for why uh, Abraham ended up in Canaan again and Lot went into, uh, end up in Sodom. And so that separation uh, allowed Abraham to be the only uh, uh, beneficiary of the covenant that comes in Genesis 15. If we want to shift from the missionary uh, mentality to a pilgrimage mentality, then we need to rethink, reinterpret this particular story. So there are details that I'd like to highlight. One of the details is that in Genesis 12 verse 6, uh, when Abraham arrived in the land, they were Canaanites in the land. So the text is clear that when the, these people of the promise arrived, they were people of the land already there. And then in Genesis 13, uh, verse uh, 7, it's not just the Canaanites. When, when uh, Abraham came back from um, Egypt, it's the Canaanites and the Perizzites were, were already in the land. So, a pilgrimage cultured reading will pick up on how the biblical text remembers that the people of the land were already there. And now this is the question for this interest on pilgrimage that the World Council of Churches um, is inviting us to. When we go on pilgrimages, do we see, do we look for the people of the land who are there? Now, it's quite uh, confronting to ask that question in a land like Palestine and Israel, because here in Palestine and Israel, there are people who are falling, who have fallen on the way of the pilgrimage. Do we see them, such as the victims of the violence of occupation and settlement? And for me, it's not just Palestine. It's about the fact that in my region, in Pacifica, there are islands that are still under occupation, such as West Papua, such as uh, uh, Maui Tahiti, French Polynesia for some, uh, the Canucks, the New Caledonians. So pilgrimage is a good invitation, but we need, no, we need to remember that there are people who are still under colonization. So we are we're wanting to move, and how do we move in this pilgrimage, mindful of people who can't move? That's one side of it. The other side is, we are wanting to move in the pilgrimage, but we need to be mindful also of people who are being forced to move by factors like uh, uh, settlement uh, or climate change in our region.